during all this time, so things were dramatically changing. What was your impression about what was going on or was not going on in Romania? Um, we thought Romania was um, very much behind uh, the rest of the countries. Um, and uh, things, of course, there had been some uh, small movement. And one of the things that RFRL did, the Romanian service did, was uh, report the, um, the letter of the six uh, dissident opposition letter from Silvio Brucan and five others in the spring. But there wasn't uh, much follow-on for a while to, to that. Um, so most of what um, the Romanian service was doing was covering developments in the other countries. Um, there was some minor controversy about that within um, the RFRL management. Um, a couple of my colleagues thought um, it was a little too provocative for the Romanian audience to highlight these dramatic things going on in, let's say, Poland or Czechoslovakia. I didn't agree, and I encouraged the, uh, the Romanian service to have as much of this coverage of what was going on elsewhere as they could, and they did. Um, nonetheless, nobody was prepared uh, for what happened in December. And um, looking back, I saw that um, as late as um, just a couple of days before um, the, uh, the outbreak of the first demonstrations. Um, the Romanian service was still planning to have a program on December 31st covering the uh, ferment elsewhere in Eastern Europe. Well, of course, things dramatically changed after the first demonstrations broke out on uh, December uh, 17th, I think. What happened in December in Romania was a surprise. What was the first reaction on the radio side? Well, uh, of course, um, first reaction is to find out what's going on. Um, we, it, it, and we got rather quickly um, recording of the, uh, uh, the violence at Dimishwar, um, but we didn't know if it was real. And so we hold on, held on to it, held it up for a couple of days till we could you know, verify that this really was the, the right thing. Case of, you know, which I think is the right editorial approach. <laughs> it, better to be right than to be first. Let's make sure it, it's, it, it's real news, not fake news as we would say today. So that was, but that was just the first step, of course. Um, and 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 um, there was coverage of what was going on in Timisoara. The um, uh, uh, chief of the bureau in uh, in 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 Budapest, Roy Eggleston, the um, Australian journalist who was from Central News, he went there right to the to the center of the place. And there was other reporting uh, coming out. So one had a lot of information. It was a question of evaluating evaluating it. How did uh, the radios react at that point and from this, uh, this perspective of trying to open up to the public, open up to as many information as possible, but still try to verify them and keep a balance? Uh, this was a challenge to how to deal with information in this kind of revolutionary situation because after Timisoara, once the violence started breaking out in, uh, in Bucharest and people were, 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 were getting killed, by that point, there, the transmitters were, more transmitters were allocated to the Romanian service and it became almost a 24-hour-a-day service. Great push. Um, but challenge of dealing with um, all the information that was coming in. And one could say that, in a sense, um, RFE, Romanian service, became um, too important because it became kind of the communication center. And anybody in Romania that wanted to share anything, were, they were going to call up Munich or get the message to, to RFE in Munich. And uh, at, at some point, one of the, um, somebody in one of the, the, the TV, TV station or one of the media, they actually called up and said, um, we, we, we couldn't get your last broadcast, it was garbled. Could you please repeat what you'd said? Um, and then a lot of people were calling up with reports of uh, Wales, uh, Ceausescu was fleeing around uh, trying to escape, you know, he, he's, we think he's here or we saw him there. All these reports were coming in. And you couldn't, um, 
you didn't know what to make of a lot of that. So um, um, one had to one had to try to sort through all this, and a lot of there, there are a lot of reports that you just didn't use because you didn't know how to evaluate them. I think the most important thing in the Romanian service was the the moderate tone of the broadcasters, and I compare that with the emotionalism that happened with some of the Hungarian broadcasters in 1956. And I had the occasion to listen to some of those um, commentaries because uh, we have the recordings. And we had an event um, um, commemorating that at the, in, in Washington in two, the tenth year anniversary in 2009 with um, Mr. Hurzianu there and uh, listening to the recording. I was struck with the calm, reasoned nature of evaluating, let, let's call it news analysis and commentary in addition to the reports. So I think that was important. Um, did Arfield do everything? It's something else important, I think. And this was purposeful. This was editorial policy. Um, programs that stress the importance of, uh, of, of, of an army, of a military, staying out of politics in a revolutionary situation. And the point was there to, to, to try to encourage the army through in not telling them what to do, but through historical examples and, um, and indirect programming encouraging the army not to take action against uh, the demonstrations that were going on. And um, I think that was the right thing to do, and I think it probably had some effect.